The other thing I wanted to point out is what our friends at Five9 have been doing. Uh, Five9 has actually been developing security products for plugging into our Hyper-V extensible switch now for, for some time. They've had many releases. It allows them to do lo all sorts of interesting things around intrusion detection and anti-malware. And I'd like to invite Konstantin Malkoff up here um, so he can give us a quick demo about some of the things they're doing in the, in the new release coming out um, that are very specific around cloud and multi-tenancy. So uh, would you mind uh, introducing, uh, giving an applause for Konstantin, please? Good morning, sir. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. All right, let's uh, switch you on over here. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, I'm Konstantin Malkov, CTO of Five9 Software. Uh, we have been developing management and uh, uh, security applications for specifically for uh, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Windows Server and Hyper-V uh, for a few years. And uh, uh, as Jeff mentioned, uh, security and compliance become more and more important um, in modern world uh, due to various factors. Uh, of course, you know, the uh, size of the environments grow and uh, new regulations come in, uh, which uh, uh, cloud needs to enforce. Uh, this is one. Uh, secondly, uh, factorial growth, uh, or even probably more of uh, different types of malware uh, uh, viruses that uh, attack uh, virtualized environments. So <clears throat> we have been uh, focusing on development uh, of the applications that come with uh, Windows Server and, and uh, uh, complements it to enforce security and compliance. And uh, uh, the theme of this session actually is uh, uh, if uh, somebody is still using VMWire, which had a wide, wide range of the uh, security applications and vendors uh, associated with it, uh, things such as uh, Alter Networks acquired by Juniper, Trend Micro, uh, uh, Kaspersky Virtualization Security, and a few others. Uh, that utilize so-called vShield API, uh, which used to be public and available to various uh, security vendors. Uh, and um, uh, as uh, you probably heard, they kind of took it in-house. Uh, so uh, what we have been doing is we have been utilizing very elegant architecture of uh, Microsoft uh, Hyper-V uh, extensible switch. And uh, I don't know if... Uh, so it's chopped uh, off a little bit on the top, but what you're seeing here is you're actually seeing that you're plugging into Right here, this is a, the, the virtual switch, the extensible, open extensible switch that we have right. to plug in your, your firewall, your virtual firewall extensions in here and your capturing extensions. Right, so uh, what I'm highlighting here is a uh, 5.9 filtering extension. Uh, that extension basically implements uh, two components uh, of our system, which is called the uh, 5.9 Cloud Security. Standalone version with the PowerShell API was released uh, uh, literally a couple of days ago. Uh, there's a public PR going out, and uh, uh, we are uh, proud to announce the beta of uh, version 4, uh, which supports uh, full multi-tenancy. Uh, and I'm just going to briefly show the uh, interface of the uh, application. Uh, does it, uh, so you yeah, can see here you've got it's, firewall, you've right. got antivirus, and IDS. Right. Uh, there are three components. Uh, <coughs> uh, firewall, which allows to isolate virtual machines. You can create virtual machine security groups. Uh, it's extremely important in a private cloud uh, and, uh, you know, uh, enterprises that adopt uh, uh, Windows Server and uh, Hyper-V um, uh, uh, cloud uh, 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 to implement their virtual private servers or virtual machines. Uh, you, you can uh, create security groups, so uh, different uh, virtual machines belonging to these security groups, they can see each other and not see each other. You, you could, in a very simple manner, uh, create uh, uh, different rules which uh, would allow you, uh, you know, certain types of traffic uh, for certain ports and uh, with uh, certain protocols. Uh, uh, I'm showing here actually uh, five nine. Uh, security plugin for uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Virtual Machine Manager. And um, for some reason, uh, yeah, it's a little slow here, but connection is slow. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see that uh, the plugin includes different types of menus, 
uh, that plugin creates, and you could uh, set up certain virtual machines for monitoring. Uh, same you could do uh, for the antivirus. You could uh, load the form uh, where you could uh, set the rules, as I mentioned. You could uh, review the firewall logs uh, for any particular virtual machine or group of virtual machines. There is an intrusion detection system. Uh, it's using the same filtering extension, same uh, uh, kernel mode driver that we developed. Uh, and uh, what it does, it does a deep packet analysis of, uh, and, and uh, performs ma ma matching uh, of uh, uh, those packets with the uh, Cisco uh, Threatfire Snort signatures. So um, uh, you could see uh, uh, ideas logs, you could create uh, blocking rules uh, from certain IP uh, addresses, uh, IP ranges, and uh, so forth. Uh, there is also a unique module uh, which is uh, agentless antivirus. This is first and only a uh, full agentless implementation of uh, uh, antivirus. Uh, we now support three major engines, Viper, uh, uh, Sophos, and Kaspersky. And uh, uh, implementation is very unique because we have, we have developed a library that allows access to the virtual disks uh, uh, file system. And uh, it works in conjunction with the change block tracking driver. So uh, incremental full scans are uh, very, very fast, uh, extremely fast. I mean, they literally go even for large size uh, virtual machines, virtual disks, uh, within seconds or minutes, not hours. Uh, and uh, because only change sectors are, are scanned. Uh, so you could see here an example uh, of uh, uh, such a kind of uh, antivirus scan. Uh, antivirus could be invoked on uh, schedule, on demand, uh, in any manner uh, you like. And uh, uh, I will briefly show the interface that allows you to create tenants, <clears throat> uh, which is extremely important for enterprises or hosting providers. Uh, uh, Multi-tenant environment, uh, we support uh, it uh, in the uh, domain, uh, work group, and mixed uh, environments uh, right now. So, you know, I'm just going to briefly show how you could uh, add uh, the tenant. And uh, associate a specific set of virtual machines with it. And uh, then a uh, user, you could go uh, and uh, name the user, associate the password. And when you set the permissions, uh, obviously, you could um, pick the user that we just created. and. Uh, it could be security administrator, order, auditor, uh, there are different types of uh, 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 users that could be created. And then uh, you could associate the tenant or group of tenants uh, with a specific user. So, uh, so, so multi-tenancy is one of the big new features that you're adding to version 4. That's right. Um, in addition to intrusion detection and firewall securities that you've had in the previous versions that have been very popular with customers, um, now multi-tenancy gives you the ability to have um, you know, s secure isolation and be able to, d to d assign those policies to different uh, organizations and groups. So thank you very much, uh, 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 Constantine. I've, I've got a tremendous amount of content, Good. but I appreciate that. Um, one of the things I want to point out, if you guys would like to know more thank about you. what 5.9 is doing, they've got a lot of videos. They've got more uh, information available online. And uh, Constantine will be here afterwards to talk further about it. One of the things that we're, we're happy to see is that we continue to have more people plugging in and taking advantage of the extensibility that we've offered in Hyper-V. And a lot of those different ways to do that is through the open extensible switch that we created in Hyper-V. And 5.9 is one of those to do that. We are, there's plenty of others that are doing it. I'll talk about those as well because it means that, that you get flexibility when you deploy your cloud solution.